Wingy Boxing IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm in awe. The two voices of boxing. What's going on? All right. How you guys doing? I don't know who to introduce first. I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> Michael Buffer, David Diamante. How are you, brother? Yeah, doing right. great, man. Great. Ha really happy to be here in the Steel City. Sheffield, Kel Brooks, Zarafa. It's a big weekend, right? <sighs> right. I don't know where to start with you guys. So much to ask you. I guess we'll, we'll talk about the fight. How do you feel... Um, Kelbrook's going to do uh, in this fight because he's got he's got to make a statement, but he can't overlook Zarafa, can he? No, you cannot. Uh, I think Kel looks really fit, and it's not you know you obviously have skill and you have will. So the the, the skill is like the physical stuff, but the, the will is in here. And right now, uh, Brook looks really fit and he looks really mentally strong. I think he's he's ready for the task. Did you watch the uh, Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight? I didn't see it. No. You I, didn't I've see seen it. highlights. And uh, you know, read up uh, on all the round by round uh, things, and looked at the punch stats and all that. So, uh, and spoke to people that are, are pretty well qualified to give a good opinion on it. So. What do you think about the uh, controversy that's that's arose from it, um, with, with regards to the scoring? Some people think uh, Tyson should have got it. Some people think. The draw was fair. How did you see the fight? You didn't watch the fight, did you, Michael? How did you see the fight? Look, what I love about our sport is that two men stepped into a ring in front of thousands of people live, in front of millions of people around the world, and everyone has a different opinion. I think that's amazing. It's the one thing I love about boxing. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's true. But in this particular case, it's almost unanimous that one judge was out of line. Without a doubt about that, and but, the, you know, but it's not at even, the it's, end, it's not even a matter of like having an opinion or this or that. The, the judge just blew it. However, the wrong. there are three judges, and it was a draw. So even if that judge was totally off base, the other two centered it. So like I've talked to a lot of. Uh, pundits that say if it was a majority draw, they would have been fine with that. It was just the wideness of the Wilder card that they didn't yeah, exactly. like. exactly. That's what I said. Uh, uh, absolutely. With regards to the rematch, if the rematch happens, do you think the fight would play out different, uh, uh, you guys? Do you feel that... I think it might be a better fight. Yeah. I, I, you know, like, uh, I think Wilder will be more focused on uh, not swinging for the fences. Uh, sorry, that's an American metaphor out of baseball. But, yeah, yeah, we know, uh, we know that one. <laughs> You know, I, I think he'll concentrate on, on being uh, a, a little more uh, focused on his punching and not try to windmill everything. And at the same time, uh, Tyson Fury, the two fights he had in his comeback were, weren't even real fights. So this basically was his first real fight since in three years since he fought Klitschko. And he looked, he looked great. But I think he can only look better. He's only 30 years old. People, yeah. For some reason, a lot of people were under the opinion that uh, Tyson Fury was the older fighter. And he's uh, 30 years old is just prime time for most heavyweights in, in their career. So I think both fighters will be better, so it could be a better rematch. Well, it's always the big question, right? Is it going to be uh, round one of fight two, or is it be round 13, uh, a continuation of the yeah. first one? Yeah. So it kind of depends. I mean, I think it, it really depends on both guys. You have you have questions on both guys. And Fury between fights is, has acted in different ways. So if he can stay focused and on the path, I agree with what Michael's talking about, because he does have, like, Fury is just great. I mean, I love the guy. I love his boxing skill, his heart, his story, his, his resurrection, his comeback, his getting up from these knockdowns. But also, at the same time, Wilder has that big, explosive punch. And, you know, I did an interview about this fight before it happened. And I said, what do you like? Do you like the explosiveness of the punching? Or do you like the size and the skill? Because, again, you know, uh, Wilder's given up like 40 pounds uh, on, on Fury. And that, that plays a difference, too. So, but yet he still was able to knock this big man down twice. Um, I think both guys have learned a lot about themselves and, and about each other, so it's going to be very interesting. I would love to see a second fight, absolutely. What is the general feeling over in America for Tyson Fury? Do you guys like the character, the quirkiness, that there's only one Tyson Fury, or is that... How yeah. do you guys take that? Actually, in America, neither one of those fighters have become crossover stars yet, which is really strange. It's unfortunate. Wilder has not... Uh, developed a, a fan base. Why do you think that is for Wilder? I, I don't know, but I mean, look at, look at the fan base that AJ has in the UK. He's a rock star, a superstar. I mean, he's, you know, just uh, amazing. 90,000 people uh, at uh, Wembley and 80,000 in Cardiff uh, twice. So, um, I think if they have a rematch, Fury and Wilder, 
it will do better, but I'm hearing, you're probably hearing the same thing, that the pay-per-view in America was only 300,000 buys. So yeah, but no it, was, it was bigger than they thought. But they were like, expecting two something. So to get well, three, I think the actually... haters were expecting two. Right. <laughs> My prediction yeah. was three, three fifty, and uh, I, there's I, no doubt. But that... I, I bet they had uh, it was pay per view here in the UK, right? Yes. At twenty pounds. It was pounds. twenty pounds. Yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I bet they had a million buys. On a different subject, David, what's it like for you uh, being in the presence of Michael? Do, do you get tips? I mean, obviously you're an experienced MC, but do, do, do you go to the legend himself for tips and advice or? Well, Michael and I have known each other for a lot of years. Um, we are friends. Uh, I really respect this man. I don't like you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, no, I mean, you know, I'll tell you what I love to uh, emulate off of Michael is his professionalism. You know, I try to always have my own style. I always try to always come original. But he is such a professional. Um, I love uh, the way he, he carries himself, and I try to also uh, emulate that. So that's, that's the only thing I try to, to take from Michael. Um, but it's funny because we can commiserate because our job, very few people in the world do our job, uh, and especially at our level. And so we go through a lot of the same things and we talk about things like we both are like, oh my God, you know, we can have a laugh about something that many people would not even understand. Because you guys are on a certain level of the, of the, the MC. Yes, yeah. and there are just certain, there are quirks and idiosyncrasies that happen with this job that people just don't understand, yeah, and, unless well, you do it. Production and yes. you know, that sort of thing. And just behind the scenes Getting a cue from a stage manager and, and things that nobody really you know, knows it, about. Yeah, it's, so it's great to be able to like have a guy to like, man, did, you know, we talk about that. And we, we have a good laugh, so, you know. But it's great being on the road, Mike. He's it's a great guy, and what people don't know, you know, he's the handsome debonair James Bond, that's great, but he's a smart guy, and he's a caring guy. Michael's a really good dude, and he, and, <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I'm just being real, and he's also a real boxing fan, and to me, that's why I think I'm also the best in the world, not because I have a great voice or a different look or I'm a great announcer, but because I love the sport. He loves the sport, yeah. and that, they were I, fans. and hopefully that shines through to the fans, that, that we're fans and that when, when I'm in the ring I'm chuffed to announce because I can't wait to see this scrap that's <laughs> right. come on man yeah. so that's what makes me the top announcer Michael can you remember your first ever MC gig my first time yeah. oh yeah what fight <laughs> uh, I prefer to forget it may I ask you the year or is that <laughs> 19 uh, October 1982 and it was at the uh, Playboy Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City Sounds fun. and I was dreadful oh. I was really really bad why what really nervous, nervous or nervous yeah. uh, you know I just uh, had no experience at you know just the first time out and really uh, a nervous wreck just survive somehow and then six months later I got another chance and, and you know corrected a lot of things and I, I still always try to uh, be better even even today oh yeah sure. David? Although, oh, I, I'm my own worst critic all right really yeah, totally. David yourself it's it's like you're always trying to fine-tune right on that stereo system, you just want to get those tra travel the mids, the lows, right in that right spot. So it's it's kind of like a, like a fighter, right? You know, people throw throw shots, and you can't walk through the rain and not get wet. You're gonna get hit. But it's like you want to it's these little eighths of an inch, sixteenths of an inch. You know, I was an NBA announcer. Same thing when these guys are shooting outside. You wait a half second, not even a half second, a millisecond. There's a guy with his hand in your face blocking you on a shot. So it's those little tweaks like Mike's talking about to try to be better. Always trying to be better. Always. And when did you start? What was your first uh, gig? In? Oh, I did a fight in New York City in a basement. Right. Yeah. Uh, for the Church Street Boxing Gym. I think that was my first fight. I had a few fights in basements. Yeah. I wasn't announcing it. They were actual yeah. fights. Yeah. <laughs> actual yeah. scraps, yeah. yeah. 50 right. years ago. You know. Yeah, it was in a basement. <laughs> And I've done a lot since, man, a lot. <laughs> we, you know, I, I worked the amateur scene in New York for many years. So um, I, uh, never, I never did amateur. Uh, yeah, I did a ton. Because I did they a ton. usually you don't even get in the ring for amateur oh, fights. Oh no, you you do. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. In New York you do. And, uh, I know and the, I, when they had the Olympics in LA in '84, um, <laughs> I, they. I was asked if I wanted to do it, and they, you do it from ringside. Sure. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. I'm like, no. you know, I just. You we know. were in the ring, and, and I came up with guys like Eddie Claudio, Steve Willis, Robin Taylor, Sparkle Lee, Waleska Rodan, Victor Babylonia, Vince Shomo, uh, Joe Higgins. Um, just there's a whole ton of people from the New York scene um, that I came up with. You know, Frankie Pena, and just just a ton of people, um, a ton of officials, and. You know, got to see guys like Danny Jacobs as children, Saddam Ali as kids. Um, you know, some of these guys now that are just really amazing. I mean, I've known these guys for so long. These did their amateur fights, you know, and it was a great thing. It did fights at Gleason's Gym and in the streets in the Bronx, Brownsville, Queens, in the rain, in the snow, in 100 degree heat, wearing a tuxedo, sweating, people looking at me like, this guy's insane. The dread's slowly growing over time. Slowly growing <laughs> over time, man. That's it, every day, man, a little bit longer. A little bit longer. That's right. Okay, um, I know you've been asked this question a million times, I have to ask it. Yeah. It'd be criminal not to. Uh, I'll go with Michael first if you don't mind, David. Sure. Your favourite fight that you've announced? Favourite? Fight that you've announced. Uh, or one of, if you can't pick, yeah, one, of, one of your top I, ones. I, I, I get asked this a lot. I know, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. To answer it, I would have to sit down and go to a computer and just start eliminating and moving. So there would just be a, a long list of you know, really great fights. Um, I, I can just like pull one out of the air, like a, a great fight. Uh, Roberto Duran challenging Iran Barkley in oh, February of 1989. That's a great blade. The blade. For, uh, the middleweight title that, that uh, Barkley had just won by knocking out Tommy Hearns in a huge upset. And Duran, another one of those coming back from the dead to win I mean, a split decision. And, uh, Great, great fight. I got to hang out with Duran uh, at his house in Panama a few years ago, before the big movie came out, the, the Hands of Stone movie. Yeah. And um, but amazing, yeah. Wow. Bad and, movie. Yeah. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say about the bad movie? movie. <laughs> it was a pretty so uh, film-wise. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was but, a bad. Um, didn't do justice to it. There's so many great fights, man. It's, could could it's, you pick one? Could I pick one? Probably not. I mean, there are a ton. You know what? The standout I, one. The standout one. There's been a lot of standouts. I mean, doing. Fights in Moscow at the Olympic Stadium, you know, doing fights in Saudi Arabia, doing fights in Newcastle, Wembley. I mean, there have just been so many great fights. Madison Square Garden, um, great arenas, great fans, great fights. But I will say, probably like my favorite fights, just being honest, happen in smaller venues at lower to mid-level kind of club action. Because to me, I love the fights. Doesn't need to be two A-level fighters taking right. each other on. Okay, I'm really happy with two club fighters going to war. And as long as I, like, you know, you look at Gaddy Ward, and we're not talking A-level fighters there, but those fights will last The, the fights themselves were great, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you had uh, Gaddy fought Mayweather and he was completely outclassed. But it's it's about the, the credit the level. Matchup. Yeah, and I did, I did some fights, uh, like in Brooklyn, and I'm telling you, man, the barricades, the security, I mean, it was just maniacal. So intense. Club level fights with fights that'll never see the surface of air because they weren't they weren't televised. But I was there and I got them here, I've got them here, I'll never forget. David, what's your favorite cigar? My own, of course. Diamantes. I have a factory in Dominican Republic, right outside of Santiago. We have Cuban seed, Dominican and Nicaraguan tobacco, and we have all I, I do all kinds of different uh, sizes shapes and sizes from robustos and coronas to double wraps and torpedoes all kinds of stuff i i used to smoke but then with my child coming i, I give it up a year and a half ago not all the time just every now and then a little cheeky cigar and i thought i might check out yours. i don't know if i'm gonna be able to afford your prices but i will uh, I'll, 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 I'll check out your your money's no good in brooklyn man you come through it's on me I come through it's on you yeah, okay. yeah here we go that's one oh man right my now. man thank there you, you very much that's a maduro <laughs> i won't Diamantes show Coronita. i won't show the wife i'll have to uh, uh, spray off afterwards. There you go. Smoke it on the road. <laughs> David <laughs> Diamante, Michael Buffer, it's an honor to speak to you too. Thanks for giving me your time. I appreciate, appreciate it, guys. It. Thank you. Thanks for speaking to Wingy Boxer and IFL TV. Thank you.